Okay, we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order uh, by the wall clock anyway, it's 5.30. <clears throat> Welcome everyone, got some guests. Welcome guys. Um, um, with that we'll do attendance and then we'll do the invocation. Jerry Powell. Here. David Scott. Here. Kenny Green. Here. Nolan Hamilton. Here. Don McCarty. Here. Crystal Hines. Here. Okay, Nolan, if you would do invocation. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for letting us gather here tonight. Father, we know it's 2017 is over and we thank you for all the prayers that you answered for us throughout this year, last, pre, last year. Now, Father, we look forward to serving you in 2018. I know you'll be there for us whenever we need you, whenever you answer all the prayers for us. Now, Father, we ask you to be each one here tonight and be with us as we go through our meeting. Bless each one here and their family. Forgive us our sin we fall short. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay, approval of minutes of regular meeting for December the 18th, 2017. So moved. Second. Motion and second approved <coughs> minutes for December of 2017. All of those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, approval of Treasurer's monthly budget report. Okay, as of December 31st, 2017, our total CDs and cash books total. $646,341.62. Um, that makes a grand total, including all the checking accounts, of $2,020,397.31. Okay, I did renew the two CDs for three months. We will come to a year in March. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Motion second to approve the Treasurer's Monthly Budget Report. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? <coughs> uh, approve the Treasurer's Quarterly Budget Report. <coughs> You're going to quarterly? We're going to quarterly. It's all the same except for the um, claims for this period. It's for a three-month period instead of just the one month. From October 1st to December 31st. Any questions? No. Nothing here. It's on back. It's on well, back. It's yeah, on back. Motion back. Motion back. Second. Motion second through the Treasury Quarterly Budget Report. All those in favor? Uh, all right. Opposed? Uh, approval of transfers? Okay. And the transfers are minus uh, behind the quarterly. Uh, we don't have any transfers for uh, this, this month, but um, we do have two cash transfers, <coughs> uh, both from the checking account. To the jail fund, we are requesting five thousand dollars, and from the LGEA or to the LGEA fund, five thousand dollars. So moved. Second. Motion, second, approve uh, approval of transfers. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Authorization to pay claims and make claims. Okay. <coughs> Uh, in the general fund, uh, the total uh, January pre-approved court claims totals twelve thousand three hundred and thirty-eight dollars and fifty-seven cents. The January court claims total eleven thousand two hundred and four dollars and twenty-nine cents, and the January late court claims total one thousand four hundred and forty-one dollars and forty-six cents. There was a typo. Uh, the actual grand total of the general fund should be twenty-four thousand. $984.32. 24 instead of 26? 24, 26. Okay. Instead of 26. Uh -huh. Any questions on the general? No. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Motion and second to approve the claims and late claims for general fund. All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed? Okay, and the road fund, uh, the January pre-approved claims total $2,005.76. The total uh, January court claims are $7,391.31. And 
and the January Lake Court claims $1,133.38. That makes the total road fund claims of $10,000. $530.45. Any question on the road? Motion to approve. Second. second. Motion second to approve the road fund claims. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The January pre approved claims uh, for the jail fund, there's none there. Um, January court claims for the jail fund are $2,260.11. And the January late court claims are $2,828.32. That makes the total jail fund claims of $5,088.43. Any questions on the jail Yeah, I, can, I don't quite understand that. Okay. Uh, the reason is we didn't, we've not got claims in from the jails. Oh. So okay. our next month is going to be uh, like so the next month. Next month is going to be out of sight. <laughs> no. I wonder what happened there because I've never, I've been in over 11 years and I've never seen a dead body. <laughs> I thought they scared the Charlie. Our meeting was earlier, what, but we didn't get uh, claims in from the jail, so that's not included this time. Oldham County, don't you? Mm -hmm. no. no. Was there? Is there no, I don't think so. I think it was like Shelby. I, I couldn't. I don't know Shelby that. County, I think maybe. It was Shelby. Oh, it was Shelby. Yeah. Shelby County's on there. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't believe this. Of course, I know we just got one in Shelby County. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's correct. Yeah. For now. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so next year, next month, there'll probably be forty, fifty thousand dollars. Probably. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and second to approve the jail claims. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay. Opposed. And in the LGEA fund, uh, the January pre-approved claims are one thousand three hundred and eighty-two dollars and ninety-five cents. The January court claims total $708.46, and the January late court claims $477. Uh, that makes the total LGEA claims uh, $2,568.41. No questions there? Yeah. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second approve the <coughs> claims for LGEA fund. All those in favor? Uh, opposed? And then we have the gross wages report for you all. Just review. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. They won't. Uh, next item Andrew for emergency management report. I don't have very much. Um, Last night was cutting it close. <laughs> we had a, a state truck hit the power lines up here and we had people without power for about three hours. So um, we were getting ready to start opening shelters if we had to. So, But they got the power back on, so that was fortunate. They were quick, that was good. Yeah. They set a pole, didn't they? No. They didn't? Not that, not that I know of, they just restrung it. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, solid waste report, Bruce. Uh, you all have anything for me? Uh, sounds like everything's going pretty smooth out at the landfill. They're finally got everything around yeah. here going. Yeah, they're, the they're keeping it a lot cleaner, the roads and all, compared to what they were yeah. a year ago. And it's so. hard to do this cold weather, too. But they're doing a pretty good job at it. Okay, uh, next item was just a review of the West Carroll Water District budget for 2018. <coughs> uh, next item is making sure wood on community needs assessment. You have the floor. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Megan Sherwood. I'm the assistant district manager for and um, we are currently conducting a community needs assessment um, for Trimble County and surrounding counties. And basically this assessment is intended to help KIPTA identify their service gaps and service needs in the community and um, which part of that is a survey which we are trying to promote as much as possible before our February 1st deadline. Um, and so we're inviting um, all older adults, so adults older than 40, um, caregivers, persons with disabilities, as well as um, providers that serve Triple County, that might not necessarily live in Triple County, to complete this survey. 
and our goal is to get around 300, or at least eight, 384 respondents from Trimble County, which I know may be um, challenging, but that will be a number that gives us an idea that we have a full representation of um, Trimble County population. So um, what we are asking for you all is help in terms of, one, you could take the survey um, and uh, give us that feedback in that way, but also promoting the survey as well in, um, in terms of uh, counties of the, or employees of the county, um, and other members of the community as well that you may know. Um, so yeah, we were trying to get this in around February 1st. Um, well, we're able to take some responses after that as well, um, but we're starting to compile these reports so that we can um, have these public forums at the end of February where we're hoping to get community leaders um, such as yourselves and um, members of the community involved on a discussion to talk about the uh, results of the survey and how um, Trimble County can work alongside KIPTA to um, kind of improve social services in the future. So that assessment is available online. Um, I have some flyers uh, that I can pass out to give you some more information about that, but it's www.optimalaginginstitute.org slash KIPTA. Um, and I also have paper copies available as well, because I know electronic is not always the way to go. So um, yeah, look forward to hearing that from you all, and I'll be around afterwards if you have questions. So. Thank you. Okay, and I don't think the gentleman's here on the, yeah, Mr. Ed, I don't think he's here. Uh, I was talking about the paving maintenance uh, supply pertaining to road repairs, and I think you came up and saw the demonstration, maybe. That's, I didn't get to, so. But yet the one we saw at? I think so. Here. Wouldn't Eddie, would that have been the one? Okay. Yes. Okay. So, he's not here. Uh, next item is approval of Keith Wagner to the library bo board. Uh, term would expire August the 27th of 18 to fill an unexpired term. I'll make a motion to go ahead and approve Keith for the position of the, on the library board. Second. Okay, motion second to approve Keith Wagner to the library board for the unexpired term to end August the 27th of 2018. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Opposed? Next item, approval of sheriff's excess fees for 2017 was $42,046.87. Asking um, the office is asking to keep the excess fees for operating expenses. First is them having to start out at zero. Hmm. And, and without this, you, you won't have operating money to out of zero, so. Yeah. Yeah, I'll all go ahead and. All of it or some of it or, you know. get this back next month? Uh, December 31st. <laughs> I knew that. He didn't say which year, did he? <laughs> no, he didn't say which year. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Can yeah, I would okay. make a motion to approve the sheriff's excess fees for 2017. Second. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Motion and second to approve the excess fees for 2017. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Okay. okay. Now I guess we need a motion on the uh, retaining the our excess fees or us giving it back to them. And this, this will allow him to keep the XX fees yes. through the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Unless you intended that to be in the... Well, I, I, can, I can add it to the previous motion, uh, or make it a separate motion if that's what you would prefer. Uh, Whatever. I'll make a, a second motion to uh, allow him to keep the excess fees for operating expenses. Okay, motion and second 
to allow the sheriff's office to keep the excess fees for uh, operations or beginning operations for this year. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Uh, next item, approval second reading of the ordinance pertaining to persons, firms, or other legal entities designating county roads unsafe for buses without this report approval. Um, I will read that. We did the first reading last month. Uh, <coughs> Commonwealth Kentucky County of Trimble, ordinance number 510.1, an ordinance relating to implementation of county road classifications. Whereas Trimble County has had inquiries about county roads classifications and whereas the Trimble County Fiscal Court maintains county roads and whereas it is imperative that the Trimble County Fiscal Court be involved in county road classifications and now therefore be it ordained by the Fiscal Court of Trimble County, Kentucky as follows. Section 1A, all persons, firms, corporations, or other legal entities must contact Trimble County Fiscal Court reg regarding classifications of any or all county roads and B shall seek said Fiscal Court prior approval to designate a county road with any type of classification so as to prevent a liability for the <coughs> county and unstable land values. Uh, this matter having hearing before the Trimble County Fiscal Court at a regular meeting of the Fiscal Court uh, held on December the 18th, 2017. Uh, motion was made by Don McCarty and second by Kenny Green and the following was saying was approved. And then this would be for the second reading. So. Motion to approve. Yes, we do. Check it. Okay. Motion and a second to approve the second reading of the ordinance pertaining to persons, firms, or other legal entities designating county roads unsafe for buses without fiscal court approval. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Right. Opposed? Next item, which we talked about last month, was, um, and we're still not at the point, I don't think, to do an ordinance or a motion, but I just uh, review $500 minimum for EMS runs, and I just put there the charge that transport is made. Y'all can, I know we talked about it last time, but think about that some more. So we'll think about it another month, and then maybe we'll come up with something. Anybody has any questions? But it sounds like you're on the, the right track there, making it a charge if the run is made. Um, I, I know we're, we're looking to recover some of the funds from the EMS that they incur on runs, but then you get into the problem where whether who called the ambulance right. to come out there and who's responsible for paying it. So, so if the run's made, I guess there's no question right. it was needed. So. We've always have always done that have when runs made short yeah. yeah. I think it we had talked about it several months ago and it's my fault I didn't follow up on it quicker. Um we was talking about charging for every run and but then the question arises, especially if it's a uh well even if it's a home Run really, they they go, but then they refuse treatment. So do you go ahead and charge them a minimal fee or or not? Um, that's that's an issue we need, still need to answer. I think um, the other is on accidents, and I know the sheriff talked about sometimes they the ambulance goes or maybe it's mandatory if they go on an accident if they've been called out or if they haven't been called out they do, but. Uh, when they get there, if they both parties refuse, if there's two involved, there's, you know, how would you charge either one of them, especially if neither one of them called for, for an ambulance and then refused uh, treatment? I got, while we're on this subject of ambulances, uh, are we making the uh, funds out here to the nursing home now? I've been told we are. Well, it might just been a, 
you know, I just asked a question. I came back to the road the other day and I see and it's got their, like an American flag painted on the side of it or something. It might have just been painted in the back of the hospital or something. Well, I mean, a lot of I times mean, when what happens, I know, know even my brother a year ago, you know, they, they transport them like from the Grange Hospital or any hospital, they use their ambulance to transport That's what I'm saying. They and then hopefully one. our ambulance is called to transport them somewhere else if need be. So. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next item, uh, not really on the agenda, I, I talked about doing executive session. Issue has come up about uh, EMS personnel carrying weapons. Um, so we will, I guess, call on the county attorney to advise us on. We, my thought was that we can't do that or we can't allow that, but we've kind of found out that I don't think we're going to have any say so in it. So, anyway, listen. There's a statute on point at 65.870 that basically says that the the county, we, we cannot do an ordinance or anything to that effect that would prohibit um, an employee um, to either carry concealed or unconcealed. Um, the county can, through an ordinance, limit on county property in the park uh, concealed or unconcealed inside of a building, if it was a, a, a building owned by the county located inside the park. But um, this statute basically says that any court, any district or circuit court would find this ordinance to be null and void. Um, the issue that's been brought up that I haven't talked to Rich Orgstein on yet, but I want to, is the liability to the county in the event something goes awry, if somebody's carrying a concealed or unconcealed weapon, um, what would that liability look like? And, and would we be protected as a county if one of our people um, is in an accident because of carrying? If we didn't okay it, would we be responsible? I mean, they still got to have their, if they got to have their uh, concealed weapons, weapons oh, license. Open. Oh, so well, if they, if they carry a concealed one, they have to have a license. Well, that's the question, is whether or not they're in the scope of employment at the time that it occurs. And so that's an issue that I want to get with Rich on because I can't find any case law on point that says either way. I, I feel if they've got the proper training, it, it shouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think it's a problem. Well, if you go in Walmart and people carrying guns, I mean, it's, it's just the way okay, it is. Okay, you've right got somebody in the ambulance and he's, he's in there, he's been a domestic, he's already mad. Or, or, or someone's under the influence of some drugs or something, and he's in there, okay, and he don't know what he's going to do, okay? The guy turns around to get something, it's right here. I haven't seen it. What if he reaches and gets that? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I see what you're saying, but, but if he's got the proper training, he, he shouldn't turn and put himself in that position. I mean, it's, it's no different than law enforcement carrying a, a weapon. They get in situations where that could happen without the proper training. I just think it's a liability it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Well, this statute's going to prevent the fiscal court from, even if the fiscal court's inclined to do an ordinance, the statute's going to say that the circuit district court's going to say it's null and void. Um, Have you talked to the people as far as who The sharing. Okay. Maybe just ask. Just to ask. It might go away. Just ask. Have they asked us about this or? No. They haven't brought it up themselves. No. Well, according to what I was, well, Don called me. He, had, I, I guess, got, actually witnessed. I got. I got uh, yes, I did witness it. I got. Uh, I got. I uh, seen two pictures. I got a text. I got a phone call on it. And, and uh, when did you all started letting them pack weapons? That was. Uh, that was the text. When did you all start this? Oh, really? And then I'm sitting and I go up for lunch. And I'm sitting there. Two, two come in, and as he turns around, and when he goes to sit down, his shirt comes up and there's a pistol. One of the MTs? Yeah. But anyway, you're going to check check with Rich. I'm going to check with okay. Rich. Mm -hmm. okay. so um, but but I can tell you based on what I can I'm see. Just, yeah. I mean, are you talking about open carry? Really carry? Well, well, his shirt was over this, and the only reason I see is the shirt come up. Oh. It's concealed. 
So right now they could be concealed or it, open it says either that way? We, yeah, and it says that there's nothing we could do, basically. Okay. Charlie? Are you saying the county cannot restrict them from, I think, a policy for the county government? I mean, there's two different jobs. EMS and law enforcement are two different jobs. The reason right. we carry pistols is because people try to fight us. And if we're getting ready to lose, we need to be able to win. Okay. EMS is a medical right. thing. And, and people do get head injuries and stuff like that. And they do become combative. I see both their points. Uh, but again, when you talk about training, if they're trained properly, then you got to keep up with the training. you got to show that they were trained. And that's a big program. It's just like going to the range every year. So I'm... But I don't see why I could encourage something else besides weapons. Well, I, I, I don't see. I mean, pepper spray or I know it's a, you know I don't I don't. There's there's jobs that restrict people from carrying guns all all over the place. So I mean, I know it's your constitutional right, but you know I I have constitutional rights that I can't exercise every day in uniform. You know I can't go out and talk about who my favorite political candidate is or you know. So there's there's different restrictions that you get. But according to the KRS, we can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, it doesn't specify policy, but if you create a policy, I mean, what would be the effect of violating the policy? If, if you don't have a, if you can't do an ordinance and you do a policy instead, I mean, what would be the effect of it? How would you enforce it? I don't think that you could terminate as an enforcement tool. Well, I, I think the individual would incur some liability on it if he was the one carrying it and an incident did happen. I agree. But then there's that potential that you get an individual who was maybe um, injured as a result of mishandling or misuse or someone else getting a hold of the weapon that they could see a whole string of people and entity to sue, including yeah, the county. Yeah. Anyway, you'll check on that tomorrow with Ridge and hopefully he might have something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have anything? The only thing I want to say is uh, thank you for getting the cannon painted. painted. Looks nice. Appreciate it. Took two years, but we got it. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't figure the paint would be good, but then be, I figured the paint would be frozen. Um, they talking about the cannon out front. It, I had, uh, and it's really been a two-year thing. I had volunteers, different volunteers that was going to paint and then somebody else would <coughs> offer and then I'd say, well, wait, we got these other people that's going to and then I'd call them, yeah, we're going to. Well, anyway, it came down to no one did it, so uh, finally we we got the job done, I guess, last month. So nice. we bought the paint about two years ago and paint was still good. It, so, <laughs> I uh, think it would be. It's better. painted and it's done. It does look good. It does it look, look good. good. Yes. I wanted to thank you for it. <coughs> uh, the veterans appreciated it. Yes. <laughs> uh, anyone from the audience have any questions? George? No. Phil? Uh, JD? Nope. Okay. Tom? Not as of right now. Okay. Um, there's no <coughs> other questions or comments. Uh, next regular meeting, uh, business meeting will be Tuesday, February the 20th at 9 a.m. here in this building. Instead of adjourn. Instead of Monday. Uh, instead of a Monday. <laughs> then we'll get back to the Monday schedule. Okay. Uh, <coughs> motion to second adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.